Sure. Oklahoma's own News on 6 starts now. Tulsa health leaders say they're seeing some positive signs with COVID-19 cases, but hospitalization numbers still concerning. Just ahead, an update from St. Francis Health System. Plus, a program created by a group of Oklahoma college students is getting a big boost in support. We'll let you know how. And we'll show you the preparations underway right now for the Tulsa State Fair this year. Good morning and welcome to 6 in the Morning on this Tuesday. I'm Tess Monty. Alan Crone joins us and woke up to a very sweet sound of a thunderstorm, Alan. Yeah, most folks did not, unfortunately, you know, but across part of northern Oklahoma, we did have some pretty good showers and thunderstorms. Uh, that's with the front that's now south of it. Spotty showers this morning still underway in a couple spots going to end pretty quickly. Gusty north winds and a break from the heat. This is the uh, the big break everybody's been looking for. That front moved through the area right on schedule last night, and this is going to set up some very pleasant morning lows over the next couple of days. Let me show you the radar this morning, the broad range. The front is pushing through far southern Oklahoma. It's pretty quiet here, even though there's a slight chance for a pop up thunderstorm. Most of the scattered showers are moving out of far northern Oklahoma this morning, just passing the Grand Lake here with some heavy rain, but there's still a chance over the next hour or two. Southern Kansas and far northern Oklahoma right along Highway 412 North for a shower or two, but this will be ending pretty quickly through the morning hours if it happens to flare back up in your hometown. Uh, right now, 63, north winds 15, gusting to 30 miles per hour. It's going to be a windy morning and a windy day, ushering in the nice taste of fall weather. So lower 60s in the Tulsa metro, 65 in Burbank, 62 in Nowata, 61 in Pryor. Southern Oklahoma temperatures here a little warmer, 77 in McAllister, 74 in Wilberton. Out the door, 60s this morning. Now, in the metro, we can't rule out another shower developing. It's still a low probability, 71 at noon, and then some sunshine this afternoon. Highs into the mid 70s. If you like today, you're going to love tomorrow morning. See you in a minute. Thanks, Alan. Doctors with St. Francis Health System say they're starting to see improvements in COVID-19 numbers, but they say there are still way too many people ending up in the hospital. News on 6's Cal Day is live to break down the numbers the hospital is now reporting. Cal. Tess, good morning. Doctors say people who do not have the COVID-19 vaccine are 11 times more likely to die from the virus. That's according to recent hospital data. The hospital reports more than 220 patients across the St. Francis Health System who are hospitalized with COVID-19 right now. Doctors also say people who do not have the shot and are under the age of 65 are 30 times more likely to end up in the hospital. Now, right here at the Yale campus, nearly 90% of positive patients are using some kind of supplemental oxygen. St. Francis will offer booster shots once it's approved by the FDA, and that could happen sometime this week. A group of experts gave the green light for the third shot on Friday for people who are 65 and older and others who are over the age of 16 who have a high risk of getting severely sick. Until we have a high percentage of folks that either have got COVID or gotten the vaccine or both, um, you know, we're going to continue to see this disease uh, go through the United States. And, and the longer we give it, the also the more opportunity that you get that you're going to see more and more variants. So again, it just goes back to the importance of, of vaccinating overall. And again, that hospital data also showing that 92% of positive patients here at St. Francis are people who have not received the COVID-19 vaccine. The hospital does post its daily data online every day by noon. Live in Tulsa, Cal Day, Oklahoma Zone is on six. Cal, thank you. Some Oklahoma children are participating in vaccine trials for those who are ages 5 to 11. Parents say they want to protect their children as well as make sure the vaccine is safe, safe for other kids. Emily Paul uh, Padalino is from Tulsa and her 12 and 14 year old became part of the Moderna trials a few months ago. She says her children's side effects were mild and now her 10 year old daughter is in the trials. The technology behind it has been studied for 20 years now um, and it really is just the safest thing we can do for our children. Pfizer announced Monday that its COVID vaccine is safe and effective for children as young as five years old. Pfizer plans to seek FDA authorization soon. 
The COVID-19 state of emergency in Stillwater has expired. Mayor Will Joyce says COVID numbers are still higher than he would like, but are trending in the right direction. And he says overflow tents set up outside local hospitals to help treat patients have now been taken down. Right now, Tulsa police are searching for a robber who officers say stole cash at gunpoint from another man who had just won a jackpot at a casino. Detectives say the suspect started talking with the victim inside the casino and they decided to leave together. They say the victim then got in the car with the suspect and drove a few blocks away where the victim was then robbed at gunpoint. Detectives say the amount of cash was pretty substantial and there's a chance the suspect knew the victim had won that money. Reading between the lines, yeah, we think that probably the suspect knew that some money was won and developed a plan from there. Detectives say it's common for people to be targeted after winning money at a casino. Tulsa police are asking for help finding a man suspected of stealing from a construction site. Police say this man, they sent us this picture of this man and they say he broke into a car wash under construction near 41st in Peoria last week, and they say he got away with a ladder, toolbox, several expensive electric drills as well. If you recognize the man, you can call Crime Stoppers at 918-596-COPS. The Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals set an execution date of November 18th for Julius Jones. Jones has been on death row for the last 22 years for the murder of Edmund businessman Paul Howell in 1999. Jones says he was never there and was wrongfully convicted. The state pardon and parole board voted last week to recommend Jones's sentence be commuted from the death penalty to life in prison. The state is still allowed, though, to set an execution date while the commutation request is pending. An airline is flying hundreds of people from across the country to New Orleans for free to help the city recover from Hurricane Ida. Breeze Airways donated $1 million for free flights. Dozens of people left for Louisiana on Monday. Breeze Airways CFO says the million dollars the airline donated equals about 10,000 round trip tickets. We're an airline, we move people, so let's move some uh, first responders, some volunteers to, uh, to get the help that the, the people of New Orleans need. If you're looking to volunteer, there is still time and slots available. Registration for that win ends on Wednesday. Preparations for the Tulsa State Fair underway this week with only nine days until opening day. News on 6's Brooke Griffin is live at Expo Square with what folks can expect this year after two years since the State Fair. Brooke? Yeah, that's right. So as we all know, the Tulsa State Fair was scaled down to an extent last year due to the pandemic. But this year, the officials say that the fair is back and it's going to be better than ever. Those officials say that they are happy to report this year that there won't really be much changes compared to their last full fair in 2019. Now, they say that they are following the Tulsa Health Department's COVID-19 guidelines and they will continue to monitor any new developments as we get closer to opening day. They tell us that they have canceled the free shuttle service since they say that not enough people have been riding it and people will need to pay to park at the fairgrounds this year. The fair will be open next Thursday, September 30th, and it will run through Sunday, October 10th. Mo more than 60 rides will be available, several big name concerts, a flying jetpack show and an Olympic sized swimming pool, and of course, livestock shows and endless food vendors. We're very excited. The Tulsa State Fair is such a significant event for our community. It overall has $50 million of economic impact, so that's a huge number. And so we're just excited to be, you know, back in full swing and being able to contribute to our community. Now, if you want to go ahead and buy tickets, you can find those in advance online or at any quick trip location, or you can just buy them at the gate whenever you arrive on the day of. Live in Tulsa, Brooke Griffin, Oklahoma Zone News on 6.